One of my favorite creatures to talk about is the American giant millipede. This native species has now been captive bred at Josh's Frogs, and what you're looking at is an entire colony that I was able to purchase and showcase in a lot of the Critter Talk presentations. These guys are almost like having a pet hole in the ground, because during the day you can't see them and you have no idea that there's even millipedes inside this enclosure. But at night, you have the chance to see all of them come out. And of course, these millipedes, living in a large group like they are, are full of males and females. It's very common to see these guys giving each other a lot of tender love and care, as you can see here. And sometimes they even get together in groups and like to hang out. This is a great sign that these millipedes are probably mating inside the enclosure, but they could be digging down so deep that I'd have no way of knowing that they have offspring until one day their offspring just appear at the top of the tank to start eating and intermingling with the other millipedes like their parents are here. A common nickname for these guys is the pink-footed millipede, but regardless if you call them the giant American millipede or the pink-footed millipede, or if you want to call them their scientific name, it doesn't really matter. There's nothing else that looks like these guys in the woods the whole way from Florida to Canada. It's incredible to see these guys on the biking and hiking trails around Pennsylvania, and that's why they became a Critter Talk creature, because we wanted to encourage the public to enjoy these guys and not run them over on the bike trails if they see them. We've been trying to do a lot of hard work to move millipedes off of biking trails and to bring attention to how important they are being detritivores, breaking down a lot of organic matter, decaying plant matter, dead animals, eating feces and mold, and a lot of other things that are pretty nasty and yucky that are on the forest floor. These millipedes provide two very important services to the forest. One is that they excavate and they turn the soil. They're aerating the soil from underneath, allowing roots to grow and a lot of pockets of air to form. This is good for the plants. It's also what we recruited earthworms to do. But the earthworms that we have are mostly from the European settlers colonizing the Americas, whereas these millipedes have always been native. Another thing is that these giant American millipedes eat decaying woody debris. So they're breaking down a lot of fallen trees. They'll eat any parts of the tree that are dying, any type of bark that's on the base of the tree, or even dead branches. They'll literally climb up trees and have arboreal tendencies to start eating branches or any hollow aspects of a tree. They'll eat dying shrubbery, any type of woody debris found on the forest floor. But they're also not picky. They'll eat rotting fruit and veggies as well. So it wouldn't be uncommon to see these guys if they found an apple tree or a peach tree or even a pear tree going to town on the fruit that has fallen off the tree. But if there's any parts of that tree that are dying, they also might climb up and eat the branches or tree in any aspect that they see fit. But that's also going to help the tree removing a lot of the dying and decaying parts. I'm very excited because we have future plans for these millipedes to appear in classrooms to allow children to not only observe them but feed them and watch them grow and hopefully to gain an appreciation for a very overlooked and underappreciated species native to our backyards in the woods of Pennsylvania. But there's going to be more information on that coming soon. These millipedes are also going to be a part of the Wild Vivarium story for Season 5. So get ready to like and subscribe and watch more millipede content for the Woods and Forests Media YouTube channel. Thanks.